<laughs> Tea Mafia doesn't want us to get all this data onto the world. How to make good water for matcha so that your matcha tastes amazing. You're not gonna buy their matcha. <laughs> yeah, I see you now. You can, yeah? Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah, finally, people pop in. Okay, because I was hey. only able to see people's comments and no like actual like I didn't I didn't know to who to say hello to. <laughs> Yay! I'm not alone anymore. <laughs> woot woot. <laughs> thanks for letting us know, you guys. See, they got our back. Great. Yeah. Right? Like, thanks, guys. Our connection sucks. We gotta call Joe the Cox guy again, <laughs> which is not our favorite Joe. The Joe who's in chat is our favorite Joe, and that's okay. So welcome, welcome. See, it's easier for me to talk about welcomes. I don't gotta just look at myself the whole time. Um, Joe, Fish Anywhere, Jeremy, who's Mr. 16% from the Poor Love Challenge. What the what? A uh, poor chick is here. For those of you who didn't know, we just finished a poor challenge. We got to over 250 poors that we had together. That's pretty insane. T-Works is here as well. Claire is here. Good afternoon, you guys. And Joshua from Trekking Buddha. How's it going, friend? See, I explained all about, I explained all the wonderful experimental variables before you guys hopped on. Now I gotta do it again. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we got our bowls set up, you know? We got our bowls set up for this experiment which we're doing. It's a water experiment for matcha. So for those of you, I gotta talk, listen to myself talk again. You guys gotta deal with it too, so it's okay. So you guys know that we have a tea curious water recipe, right? It's, uh, I haven't posted on the blog yet. I promise I will, so everyone can use it, but it's been posted on the Discord, so it's open source. It's, you know, using minerals you can easily buy from Amazon, the grocery store, to formulate waters at home that are just as good as these really famous waters. So Poland Spring is a really hard hitting one. People really like Poland Spring. Um, Fiji's another one. I think Volvic's a really good one that people talk about a lot. But if you don't have the budget to be buying those or you don't want to use a lot of plastic in the process of making your own teas, there's actually a way to formulate these waters at home. And over the years, I've really dug deep into this topic. We're from Las Vegas. Our water sucks balls. It sucks a lot. And if you're spending any time on good tea, you should be using good water. So we actually developed a formula that works really, really well for most teas. So most of the tea that you see poured here on the lives and on Instagram, on the Discord, Steven and I are using this baby back here. See this? No, no not the Evian. Jesus, no. It's, it's this guy over here. Our little uh, kind of... We, we get the water filtered to reverse osmosis, then we add salts back to it in order to get the profile we want from the teas. And it costs us like cents per gallon, cents per liter. Um, it's really, really good, but there's a weakness. I think it doesn't do well with matcha. And Tyler, who's Hakuna Matala on the Discord, posted recently that he's tested some matcha with the Trader Joe's New Zealand artesian water, which is actually the water I modeled our water after. It's very close because I like that water for almost any tea. Again, that's the Trader Joe's artesian water. It's like a version of Fiji that's cheaper and a little bit lighter. Really good with tea. But it didn't perform well for him compared to other bottled water. So today I'm going to try to figure out, now that Steven and I have both seen, that our water doesn't perform as well with matcha. And also... Tyler has seen on his own experiments independently that our profile doesn't do well with matcha. I want to make sure we can figure out what does well with matcha. Yeah. And I know it's a lot for those of you especially who haven't done the water formula thing with us. And if you're living next to a glacier in Seattle or, you know, in Germany somewhere, you don't got to worry about it. Your water's probably really good. <laughs> but we live in Vegas. Our water sucks. We're a desert. It smells like chlorine when it comes out of the tap, so it's not the best for any kind of tea. And the formula we have basically is good for almost everything except for green tea. Yeah, that's why we're doing this today. So yeah, any questions, let me know. I know that's kind of a lot. <laughs> but once we do figure out that formula, we will publish that just as we did for the original kind of base formula, the Tea Curious Matcha water formula, I guess. It's a lot of words. Uh, Heisha Holiday is here, Felipe B. Dominguez is here, 
Tea Dragon, Dylan has it going, Nienka Becker, Tere Stock, uh, Le Matin, Tea, <laughs> Kev the Tea Head, and Dr. Felix. Welcome to our experiment today. As always, you know, I could be preparing this beforehand, but I want you guys to see how I do this process so that if there's any issues with the experimental process, or you have a question about what I'm doing, or you want to do this experiment yourself, you can also do this experiment yourself at home. You just need, you know, a scale so you can make sure you have about the same amount of matcha. And what I've been doing while waiting for Instagram to get its shit together and get a connection up is I've been sifting the matcha through a filter because if I weigh them out with these chunks, what makes those chunks stick together? I don't know, actually. Static electricity, I've heard, but when they stick together, they're also trapping little air pockets inside of them, I imagine. So I want to sift those out before I weigh them so that I'm not weighing air, I'm weighing tea. And then we'll do like two grams for each bowl, maybe, and then we'll weigh out the waters. So yeah, we'll test the current recipe, which is a tea curious water that we use for almost everything else. And then we'll test, I don't know, maybe you guys can help me figure it out. I don't want to test four different waters, but I got Mountain Spring, no, Mountain Valley, which is a spring water, Poland Spring, which is what Tyler used on the Discord, and um, Evian, which I picked these waters because they are a little bit different from what we've used to formulate the Tea Curious formula. The Tea Curious formula is based off of artesian water, which is like Fiji, the Trader Joe's artesian water, we don't gotta get complicated about it, but it's a different kind of water. These are like spring waters from like the mountains, melt water, etc. And they're also a little bit harder than what the Tea Curious formula is. Our water is pretty soft. We formulated it to be very soft, around 40 to 80 TDS. And um, I have a feeling that the matcha will do better with harder waters. You can't get much more softer than that without just stripping off the flavor. And because matcha is a, you know, it's a little bit different from regular tea leaves when you infuse it, you know, um, it's, it's, it's heavier. You keep the tea leaves within the water. So it's not a surprise that it needs a different water to behave differently. In coffee, they have formulas for regular coffee and espresso and matcha is kind of the espresso of our world. So I'm not surprised we need to test a different water, but I'm not sure which one we should do. Should we just do the one that, well, so he used, Tyler used the Poland Spring, but the Poland Spring is pretty close in softness to the Tea Curious water. So I'm, I'm wanting to do Mountain Valley, which is closer to the Arrowhead water that he thought was pretty good for matcha. And then I want to do Evian, because Evian's a very heavy water. Um, Evian is like, 345. That's very, very heavy. It's almost, yeah, that's very, that's really heavy actually. Yeah, so maybe we'll do that. Is that okay? We'll do these two guys. So T Curious is at 40 TDS, Mountain Valley is at 200 TDS, and the Epion is at 345 TDS. So quite a range, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. And then from here, I will weigh out. Now that I've sifted the matcha, I'm going to weigh it out to like one gram of sifted matcha. Again, make sure you sift the matcha before you weigh it out so that you're not weighing air, you know? Okay. And then we'll also weigh out the water because I think for this experiment, we need to be pretty precise. Um, water formulation is very, very precise. I often don't have the patience for it, but it's a necessity thing. Um, we don't have good water like y'all in Canada <laughs> or y'all on the East Coast. Um, our water uh, measures at 400 to 500 TDS and TDS is total dissolved solid. So for every million um, parts of actual water, there's 500 little bits of other things, you know? For reference, Seattle's at like 30 TDS, Poland Spring is what? 60? 60 TDS? It's very soft. Anyway, Vegas water sucks. That's why we do this. I'm not a snob. It's Vegas water sucks. Okay. So while I'm doing this stuff, I'm setting up. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what y'all are drinking today. 
I hope it's not poor because if not, then you haven't moved on. <laughs> we haven't moved on from the, the poor challenge yet. Poland Spring is 35 to 46. Okay, so pretty, pretty close to what we have, actually. That's why a lot of uh, forums you'll see online will recommend Poland Spring because softer water tends to be good for tea. But more than just the softness of the water, you also have to account for what's inside the water. And that's why I do all these crazy, like, oh, I gotta measure out and, you know, figure out which salts need to go in. Because it's not just how soft the water is, but also what's inside the water. Yeah. Okay. I'm curious. I think that, I bet that the mountain mountain valley will do the best. The Evian might be just a little bit too hard. What do you think, Steven? Agree. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. And all these are spring waters. Our water is formulated after an artesian water. Spring water is basically from the mountains. Artesian water is like filtered up from the ground. So I know it's a lot. <laughs> I didn't come into this wanting to get that complicated about water. But again, if you're spending any time on like good tea, your water better be good too. And I was inspired by the coffee industry because uh, the coffee industry will actually formulate waters for specific profiles of, you know, coffee. And whenever they compete, they'll bring their own water profiles as well. So last year when I competed at Tea Masters Cup here in Vegas, I used uh, a, a beta version of the Tea Curious water. It wasn't as good as this one, so that sucked. But I did use my own water and, you know, placed okay. So it worked better. But maybe that's a home advantage. I'm like, if they accidentally used... Vegas water, they're gonna lose because Vegas water sucks so bad. Okay, so three bowls, one gram each of matcha in each bowl. Actually, we've got enough for like one more test, so we'll see. Yeah, and I'm gonna sift this guy back in. I am not gonna preheat the bowls, okay? So as long as you're running these experiments, as long as all the tea wear is the same, uh, if you're gonna preheat one, preheat all of them. If you're not gonna preheat any of them, don't preheat any of them. All that stuff that your chemistry teacher taught you, hopefully. My chemistry teacher, teacher was actually very disappointed in me because I spent most of my chemistry um, sitting next to my crush and copying off their homework in high school. <laughs> Just for an excuse to talk to them. It wasn't Steven though, but that's okay. Yeah. Tony the asked lol, how's it going? Who else has popped in? Josh.to and Annabelle. Kutil, welcome to our experiment today. So Joe uses Poland Springs or Nestle Spring. Uh, that's that water over there we showed. And Claire, I kind of want to get one of this big clay water jars and walk in with that and see what people think. Yeah, I've heard about those resting jars. It's the same concept. The minerals from the clay will affect the water in a certain way. Why we decided to go with the salts is we just really wanted to get very specific about what minerals you wanted in our water. I believe that's also part of why our different pots will do different things to the tea. It is a seasoning of the pot, but also the minerals that the pot is kind of leaching into the tea in very, very tiny amounts. That's changing the taste of the tea. And that's why you'll see in our experiments with different pots, the, the same tea at the same volume per water will come up with different colors because of the, the, uh, the dark the the hardness of the water usually hard water will read as a little bit darker color wise yeah and it's a lot again um i'm going to be posting some water guides in the future the near near future now that pour love is over once i crunch all that data we'll have a lot of you know a lot of time to work on water stuff yeah uh hit stock is having nuzzle diver from may Leaf. i've never heard of that one they always have the most interesting tea names uh, I liked Mayleaf, actually, when I visited them in London. Uh, tea Sleuth, Pure Aura Water actually works well with some amazingly good Dansong. And I'd like to try that. I know that Iman from Tea Habitat says that, but I just don't like Pure Aura Water. It tends to be very less nothing. But maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Joe's having Red Bull. Is that a Mayleaf too? <laughs> and Claire, that's a scientific collaboration. Yeah. That's why I like sharing these with you because the more people can actually test and do their own independent, you know, experiments, get results, the better. Tyler's test on his own, you know, pushed me to revisit this topic because I know from 
me and Steven's experience, our formula does not do well with matcha. But now that someone else has tested it, we know for sure that there's some work to do. Okay, what temperature should we use for the... We should just use boiling. Yeah, we'll boiling. use boiling. Boiling. Yeah. <laughs> so we will use 100... No. Yeah, 100 degrees Celsius. We don't have 100 degrees Celsius here, actually. So 96 degrees Celsius. Las Vegas is high elevation. We can't get 100 degrees Celsius. <laughs> I think our water boils at like 97 degrees Celsius because we're just we're just so high up. Uh, Todd Terry is here. Um, Shiloh, aka Knowledge, is here. He's got the cave with like the big Knowledge in the back, but he hides it because no, he doesn't want anyone to know. <laughs> Hey, Shah Holiday, I have good tap water. They said, a little hard, I think, but at least I, I can't find anything about it on the internet. Yeah, usually you'll notice if your water is bad if you run an experiment. That's really the best thing to do is, I think, you know, Fiji is a really good bottled water to test next to tap water. Poland Springs is another good one. And note that with the bigger bottled water brands like Arrowhead or Crystal Geyser or even Evian, I noticed different areas of the country or even areas of the world will get a slightly different bottling of the same water either because it's from a different source entirely or if it's from a different part of the area so uh, crystal geyser here in vegas is i think from california but if you're in like the midwest your crystal geyser is from the midwest it's completely different water uh it makes it a little bit difficult to compare but if you use like a Fiji, which I just hate that we have to ship water from the Pacific Islands, but for the sake of learning just once or twice, use Fiji because Fiji is bottled from just one source. So it's very easy to compare. Let's say if Shiloh or Joe or Claire uses Fiji for an oolong, uses five grams in a, you know, Gaiwan, that's ceramic, porcelain, you're going to get about the same experience. But if, let's say, you know, uh, Jeremy is using uh, Evian and you're using I don't know water and then he's using a Kyusu and you're using glass it's gonna be a little bit different which is fine but if you're trying to compare you'll be like how come you like that it's so sour I don't get it and the other guy is like oh my god it's amazing oftentimes it's not the tea sometimes it is but I, I found that sometimes it's the water too and the, the tea wear yeah okay Let's see, 96 degrees Celsius. All right, so I'm going to do this step by step because Stephen has to be my lovely assistant and switch out the waters in between. We will use um, not that much water, actually. We'll use 100 ml of water, one gram of matcha. It's actually a pretty low ratio, if I'm being perfectly honest. We will just barely preheat the barely preheat the um the pitcher uh oh oh no that's that's chris we use christine's scale and then to weigh out the water so that we're really getting precise we will use a scale you guys have seen me do this before i've done it a thousand times before but at least you can prove it and one gram is one ml of water so that we'll use 100 ml for all of these. Hundred grams. Okay. Cool beans. Ooh, I haven't primed my matcha whisk yet. That's a big. That's a big no no. Quickly prime it. Make sure that your matcha whisk is primed because, you know, once I do the other ones, this first one will be all primed up too. Let me cover this so that it's not losing too much heat while I do this. See? See experiments take practice. <laughs> you gotta have your mise en place, your experimental setup. It's fun though. I like it. What else is ha everyone having? Let's see. Um, ooh, all this water talk. <laughs> um, hate your holidays in rural Virginia, so you're in luck. Yeah. <laughs> Virginia sounds like a lot better water. 
um, collection than Vegas. We can't even collect spring water here. It's just so far away. It completely destroys the idea of being environmentally friendly because we have to drive a long way to get to the nearest spring water source. And not all spring water is amazing. We've actually collected a couple different spring waters and some of them suck, <laughs> but some of them are better. Uh, Nyanke's Becker is having tap water here, a bit hard but low in chlorine. Yeah, the chlorine's a, the, the big kicker for us here in Vegas. Um, yeah, Steven says the best water we've collected for tea was from Yosemite and also from Taiwan actually. Uh, Taiwan spring water is really really good for some reason and it's it's all good water it's just depending on how it interacts with the tea and it, I find that even the coffee uh, waters are different from the tea waters because I've tested initially just coffee formulas and their formulas don't work exactly the same for us so yeah how long did I take to before I, I use this I need to put that cooling that cooling time into Okay, you guys ready? I know a couple of you kicked in, but I'm gonna say hello to you guys in just a little bit. So 100 ml of water with one gram of matcha. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it. I'm not gonna make the paste or anything. Usually I make a paste before whisking, but I'm just gonna keep it simple. So this is uh, sifted matcha, one gram, 100 ml of water at 96 degrees Celsius, rested for like two minutes, I would say, because I'm. I forgot to prime my whisk. And then we'll also see how the aroma of the matcha is. It's a little sharp, to be honest. And it's foaming okay, but it's not the best I've ever seen. This is a pretty big amount of water for the amount of matcha, so I expect the foam isn't going to be the prettiest. Usually you want it to be at like 2 grams or 3 grams per even 100 ml of water. But I don't want to use too much good matcha. <laughs> Yeah, the matcha I'm using is a Mie Matcha, a single cultivar organic, from sinensis.mx down in Tijuana. Salvador sometimes pops in, so if the matcha sucks, we'll crucify him. Or not, <laughs> we'll just get mad at him. This matcha's really good. <laughs> okay, how long did I whisk? Ooh, I didn't, I, we didn't measure that, it's okay. And then back into the water, and then we'll drink this. Steven, can you help me switch out the water, please? Not bad. Film's not bad. Which you one know? do you want to do next? The, the next one we'll do is going to be the Mountain Valley. I'm going to go from latest. Whoa. Oops. Any tea it's wear? Just the lid. Okay, good. The We're going to go from the today. softest water to the hardest water, okay? okay. It's not bad. But it's kind of thin. Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, yeah, it's actually not too bad. Very soft, very sweet. There's a little something something there that I don't really like. It's kind of thin and not lacking a lot of... It's just lacking some oomph to it. It's very, very pleasant, but it's a little bit watery, a little thin. I'm seeing that Tyler from Hakuna Matala is here. Dude, how was the New Zealand artesian water that you tested with Kettle's, I think, Shirakawa Matcha on Discord? Um, Tyler is the reason why I'm doing this today. Um, I've noticed the same things that he has based on the same like kind of water formula tests. The thing with spring water, I really wish I could just collect good spring water, but you don't know what's inside the spring water. So you can't really like, hey, I'm using spring water. How did your tea experiment go? But Virginia spring water and Vegas spring water is going to be different, even if they both taste really good, just because of the composition of the minerals. So if you're into clay, like collecting different niching pots for, you know, your teaware, if you're into, you know, even just infusion times, this stuff might seem very kind of detailed, but it's the same situation. You're just fine tuning the tea. Your water will make the tea taste different just as much as your yixing teapots will, you know? Uh, Dina Lencioni is here too, and Danae from Camellia's Treaty. Yeah. So, a really nice aftertaste though. I really dig it. It's actually quite sweet. It's just a tiny bit of sharpness is the problem for me. And I for this matcha that I know is very bold and kind of umami, really well-rounded, I just want a little bit more. But it's quite tasty, I would say. 
Uh, Joshua says that he's worked in Zion National Park and found some amazing, amazing water in some of the canyons. Where do we collect the water? It's not in the canyon, that's the problem. We no. collected yeah, Zion the water from the bottom <laughs> yeah. in the valley before we left. <laughs> that did not go well. We did collect from like the side and from the middle, and the middle one tasted better. The one from the side was like a little rocky. <laughs> This is based on the story that, was it Lu Yu? I think it's Lu Yu. Um, Lu Yu's the tea sage in China, and there's a story that, um, you might have seen this if you read my article on 80 Degrees magazine, but he supposedly was able to tell if water was collected from the middle of the river versus the side of the river, and he could tell you which river in China or pool or well you collected your water from just by the taste. And I guess he's a patron saint of Tea curious water. <laughs> I'm like, damn, that guy's so cool. Like, when I die, I want to go talk to him. <laughs> I like to talk to Da Vinci, but also first Lu Yu. Like, Da Vinci's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, hold on. I gotta go check out my, my boy Lu Yu. Like, hey, dude, I spent my whole life with water too. How's it going? <laughs> Don't listen to me. I'm, I'm stupid. So. Uh, H. Holiday said he or she used wa RO water when you were last in San Diego, did not care for it at all. I don't like RO water either. Our formula, again, starts with RO water. This guy in the back. We start by collecting RO water just from like the grocery store. If you have an RO water filter at home, even better. It works out to be less than a cent per, per gallon or liter once you get the material. So I think it costs about $40 to get all the salts in the beginning and scale and stuff but after that if you think about fiji water or you know poland springs being at least like a dollar a liter right it's just it, it, it really adds up <laughs> um lilac savina is here what dream has come true for you my friend and shiloh had some of the best tasting spring water in changzhe shanxi province in china Delicious and refreshing by itself, but not great with tea. Yes. Some of the best tasting waters actually don't go well with tea. I don't... We don't mind drinking the Tea Curious formula, but my fridge water tastes better just for drinking. <laughs> Tyler's asking, is the TJ in New Zealand considered really soft? Um, it's considered to be like in the middle. I can list off all these data points for you, but we actually softened the Tea Curious formula from the New Zealand from Trader Joe's. So for reference, again, our formula is modeled after a water we really like after testing a lot, which is a Trader Joe's New Zealand. It's like a softer version of Fiji. And then we softened it even more because it was a little bit too hard for us. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but the foam came out pretty well for us. Um, the next one is going to be a little bit closer to the, both the Poland, uh, both the Arrowhead and the Trader Joe's water, which is the Mountain Valley. Maybe we should try Poland Springs also, if we have time. Second one, Mountain Valley. I'm going to leave some of the tea curious water here for us to test. So Mountain Valley is the next one. Um, Slowly, slowly, we will get rid of this stash of balls we have in the spring, Stephen. I think the last thing is to figure out this matcha formula. And coffee folks, you know, the formula for espresso is different from water for coffee. So I'm not surprised that this is happening. Um, yeah, so we'll measure this out again. 100 ml for one gram of matcha. Oh, you're right, <laughs> not that one. Steven's like, don't use that scale! It's this scale. This scale can just take more weights than the other one, that's all. <laughs> it's not like, uh, I refuse to use that other scale, this one's just better. <laughs> that one just won't take the weight. So 100 grams of water is 100 ml of water. And then I'll let it cool down for like two minutes because that's that's what I had to do the last time because I forgot to prime my whisk like a stupid person. And then we can chit chat. <laughs> 
Uh, Lilac Sabina is asking what brands of matcha did I steep today? We're actually using just one matcha. This is the Mie Matcha from uh, Sinensis.mx in Tijuana. I think they do have this tea online. Uh, it's a really, really good matcha. Mie isn't a famous location for matcha. From what I understand, this is very close to the heart, like central Uji region. And Uji is very famous for matcha, so a lot of the stuff from Mie actually gets kind of blended in and looped in with the Uji matcha as a brand. This happens a lot in tea, as many of you guys know that the famous one village will kind of, by extension, make all the surrounding areas very valuable as well. But you can't use those other villages' names to sell the tea. It's got to be the original village or the original area that became famous first. So I think Mia is in Kyoto too, right? Kyoto Prefecture? I think it is. And um, just from what I'm remembering. So it's not a famous, famous name, but the quality is really, really good. I think um, Salvador. Yeah, it's its own prefecture. But very close to Kyoto. Yes? Maps. Maps. <laughs> <laughs> I could be talking on my ass, which is why I tell you guys, you always gotta double check to see if what I'm saying is right or not. I do my best, but sometimes I forget. Just east. East of Kyoto? Yep. It's close enough. A little southeast. <laughs> it's close enough. We'll just call it, we'll call it Uji. <laughs> yeah, I, I do think it's, it's, it's marketed a lot as Kyoto or Uji Matcha. It's just, it's just kind of more oomph, you know? So those people can make more money if they market it that way. But it's got its own characteristics and it's got some of that umami kind of depth going on. It's very, very tasty, very thick. What I'm waiting for from this tea is just a little bit more depth and deliciousness. Um, that's why I want to use a different uh, water. Ooh, interesting. Kettle recommends Poland Springs, which is what they use in their shop in New York. I do have Poland Springs here. We can test that out if you guys would like to, because I have some. Okay, not making the paste. We're just going to whisk. Keep it simple. <clears throat> this is the ooh, Mountain Valley. 200 TDS. It's not foaming as easily. That's interesting. It's a little bit harder to foam, my friends. What is going on here? Hmm, hmm, the same person. And I do have some muscle, you know? Got some grit. I can, I can whisk m multiple bowls of matcha. <laughs> it's a little bit more difficult to whisk. It is foaming up though. There's no aroma coming from it, interestingly. Remember the first one that we whisked? I actually smelled the aroma coming up from the tea. I can only smell if I if I dip down, but what I do smell is more umami, more nutty, darker, much different. Very, very different. And then I whisked it for quite a while. I don't remember how long I whisked it, Stephen, so I'm just gonna go a while until the bubbles kinda... That's what do I want. That's what I want. Alright. Yeah, this is a little bit harder to whisk than the other one, interestingly. Which water do you want to do next? The water I want to do next is Evian, probably. Okay. Yeah. We'll get it started. Okay. Boop. Yeah, the foam just isn't as bouncy as the Tea Curious water formula. That could just be me, because from bowl to bowl, of course, you'll prepare the match a little bit differently. I felt like it was a little bit more difficult to whisk, though. Just, just my initial impression. It smells a lot darker. Wow. Did you taste the first one, Stephen? Yeah. You did, right? This one smells a lot darker, nutty, and umami. The other one is very light, very floral, very sweet. Wow, it's so different. Holy crap. That's not even the same matcha, dudes. Get out of here. That's not the same matcha. It's not the same matcha. <laughs> right? Isn't that super different? Yeah. It's it's dark, it's umami, it's nutty. If someone gave me yeah, these two funny. matchas, like in a side-by-side, -side, I'd be like the two different matchas. Because they have different flavor notes. Completely different flavor notes. This one, the first one we did with the Tea Curious water, which is softer, lighter, was sweet and soft, creamy, nice. Not quite creamy, actually. It's just sweet and light. A little bit creamy, but very refreshing. 
on the lighter side and the aftertaste was cooling. This one, it's even hitting different parts of the palette. This one's more on the tongue. It's a little bit more smooth and kind of satisfying. The texture, I think, is better here. But from being so floral and bright, it suddenly went really dark and nutty and kind of brooding and more umami, you know? Weird. And then that kind of sharp bitterness that was in the Tequila's water is actually gone, I would say, Stephen. Right? It's not as tinny. It's not as sharp. I'm gonna try the Tequila's one again. It's not the same matcha! <laughs> this always gets me. No matter how many times I do water experiments, this sucks. It's just... This reads to me as a very different matcha. If you gave these to me, like, just straight up and said, what do you think of them? I'm like, they're two different matchas. <laughs> I never met this matcha in my life. Um, yeah, wow. Let's see, a lot of uh, matcha and water talk. Shiloh says that Earth 20 spring water is a delicious local source for tea water. Uh, Make very neutral tea so you can really taste the leaf. That's what I like too. I like that, I like water that allows you to taste what the tea is supposed to be. But now I don't know which one is the more correct. I feel like it's somewhere in the middle. So maybe that's why it's Pollen Spring, because Pollen Spring is in the middle of these two. Is it? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, space between black and white is here. And Marini, how's it going? It's nice to see you. Tea Path is here. And also the rest of Not Made in China tea family. How's it going? Yeah. Uh, oh, I didn't get to say goodbye to H.A. Holiday. No, I'm sad. <laughs> DLN Tea is here. And uh, Happy Leaf Tea and It's Holy Oogie. Welcome. All right. We are on bowl number three of our uh, matcha and water experiments. The first matcha we did, same matcha, different water, you know, um, completely different flavor profiles. The first one is very light, floral, kind of sharp. Second one was more nutty, umami, dark, completely different experiences, I would say, which is crazy. I'm gonna do one more if I can. I wanna do one more matcha um, test after this. Now that, uh, now that Tyler told us that Kettle, who is a matcha purveyor in New York, actually uses Poland Spring for their matchas. I want to use Poland Spring for us too. Okay. So we'll do four total today. We always, I always end up doing more tests than I initially, initially <laughs> intended to. It's just the way it goes. And we're using one gram of matcha for every single test here. I hope this will reach one gram. Waiting for the water to boil to test Water number three, which is going to be Evian. Oh, I need six more matcha. And yeah, let me know how you guys are doing today while we're prepping these last couple experiments. Again, this matcha is brought to you by Sinensis.mx, my friend Salvador Sosa. Um, on Instagram. He's over in Tijuana, but this tea I think is available on the website. He for a long time was looking for a really good organic matcha that would do well not just in Southern California but also in Mexico, which I understand uh, the Mexican market even more than the American market likes really sweet teas. And this is a very sweet matcha. So I think it works out pretty well for them. And I like sweet matcha too, so it works out pretty well for me. <laughs> Oh my god, matcha so... God, I need like 10 more grams of that. 0.10 more grams. And uh, yes, I could prep this all in advance, but I like to do it live so that if there's any problems with what I'm doing, suggestions to, you know, improve the experimental design, you can tell me. And I'm gonna be totally open to it. I've actually changed a lot of what I've done in my experiments over the years as people, you know, have pointed out this issue and that with how we run the experiments. So that's why we're doing this the way we do. Plus it's more fun. 
Otherwise, I gotta stare at Steven's face all day. Gross. Gross. <laughs> no, he's really cute. All right, so that's ready for our fourth experiment. We'll do the third water. This one is going to be Evian. Fancy ass water from the Alps. Okay, I'm gonna do a really quick preheat on the Gonda Bay, the Chahai, whatever you wanna call it. Then we'll weigh out another 100 ml. I wish I was like Babish from binging with Babish. He's so soothing. I don't think I'm very soothing at all. Last year during the T Masters Cup competition, um, I forgot who it was, but one of the judges was like, everyone should always use their own approach to serving tea. Just always be yourself. Like that girl over there, Christine, one of our um, friends at Tea and Whisk, um, who's taken you know a couple years of workshops with with us. Um, she was called Ambient Calm because <laughs> she was so calming. And then her fiance was called Mysterious Compelling Man. And then I was Energizer Bunny. So I'm like, that's like the worst out of all three of them. <laughs> it's not what I would have wanted, but that's okay. Uh, he says, just be yourself. And I guess I'll never calm down. So I will be Energizer Bunny if that's what he wants me to do. Yeah, um, Gold Spruce is here, Henrique is here, Jared Mark Farland is here, and T Traveler is here. Also, um, a couple of friends too from the above. It's Holy Oli and Heavy Leaf Tea. Yeah, cool beans. This is the third bowl of matcha. Here's the proof of the first two bowls we've done. Water one, the Tea Curious Water Formula, which we use for all of our, you know, all of our teas here at Tea Curious. It works really well for almost everything but matcha. And then this one is uh, Mountain Valley, which, you know, ended up being a lot more dark, nutty, and textural than the T. Curious formula, actually. I would like to find something that's in the middle of those two. I don't think Evian will give me what we want because Evian is actually harder, just more minerals than Mountain Valley. You'll notice that a lot of the fancy waters are actually quite hard because hardness in water will make the water taste more rich and sexy, but it doesn't always equate to being better with tea. That's why we, we test them. And I, I thought I got over this stage in my tea life where I was testing all these waters, but matcha's the last, matcha's the last challenge because our water does well with almost everything and can be lightened or just made more heavy to suit different kinds of teas, except for matcha, right? Just hasn't worked out. So I'm just waiting for this to cool down, because I did have to prime my whisk on the first first experiment. Steven, would you mind switching out for the, um, the balance spring? We'll do one more after this. I didn't intend to, but Tyler says that uh, Kettle in New York uses Poland Spring for all their matcha, so I'm really interested to see why they use Poland Spring. Tyler himself did a test that he posted on Discord in that he actually preferred Arrowhead over Poland Spring. It could be a personal preference, of course, but I want to see what's up with that. All right. You ready? It's about as long as I left it earlier, right? Yeah, okay. Just dumping the water in. I usually make the paste, but today I'm just gonna dump it in and whisk. And yeah, this is foaming up a little bit better than the Mountain Valley actually, but still not as good as the Tea Curious formula. And that could just be me again, you know, from bowl to bowl. There's tiny little variables that will change the way that your foam will come out. Practice will smooth those variables over, but it is seeming to foam better than the Mountain Valley for some reason. I suspect it has something to do with like the bicarbonates in the tea, I mean the water, calcium, I'm not sure. We'll see. No aroma coming out. The first bowl I could smell the tea um, from far away. Both the Mountain Valley and the Evian. I almost got it. ooh, I don't like the smell of that. I gotta dip down to get any kind of aroma. I don't like the smell of that. Hmm, weird. Okay, 
it's not foaming as well as I'd like it to be, but that's all right. The ratio is pretty high here of the water, so that's to be expected. That's so-so. That's yeah. Okay. Something wrong with that aroma. Tastes like nothing. Tastes like nothing. <laughs> this is Evian? That's Evian, yeah. It's very textural. I like the texture of it, but it tastes like nothing. It's disappointing. Yeah, it's very disappointing. It kills the flavor of the tea quite a bit. Yeah. I like the texture, but then all of the complexity of the matcha, the <laughs> aroma is gone. The sweetness is kind of there, but any kind of interesting notes are completely destroyed in the matcha. And that's Evian, you know? It's a very expensive water, very fancy water, but not something I've ever liked for any kind of tea. I have heard that some people in the UK like Evian for black tea. Maybe it helps round out the bitter notes of the really potent black teas you can sometimes get in tea bags, but for most things I don't really like it. No disappointing. The one maybe good thing about it is that it is quite sweet. I like the texture. It's creamy and the aftertaste is quite nice, but I don't think it's worth it for how much it kills any complexity in the flavor of the matcha, especially a matcha this good as the Mie from Sinensis.mx. This is a very good matcha. I like the creaminess though. Do you like that, Steven? It's very creamy, the texture. Again, it's not worth it for how much we sacrifice in terms of complexity. I think that's a bicarbonate content, actually. Um, I've, I've not, I'm not a chemist. I am a communication studies major. I took that up in college because I wanted to learn how to talk because I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> but from doing these side-by-sides, I've kind of learned what things in the water correlate with what happens with the tea, and I find that bicarbonates will tend to increase the textural effect of the, the tea, so I think the Tea Curious Matcha formula has to be high in bicarb. Steven. We'll have to test that out. It's so creamy! I'm sad, because it's very creamy. It just tastes like nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. So Clara says water with a lot of polar molecules also increases viscosity, which makes it feel smoother when you drink it. I'm not sure what are polar molecules in our formula. I'll have to look it up. I can ask Christine too, because it's good, it's good to have chemistry friends. <laughs> Luckily, we have a lot of them here in Vegas. Uh, Tyler says that his favorites were Arrowhead first, and then Poland Springs, and then Trader Joe's. And he says it is a pretty specific matcha. I would say that, you know, most... What works well with one matcha will probably work well with others. Just my guess. We can test this out. Uh, Marzi is here, and who's at Java, the Earl Grey story? Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. And Sonia Ferrer-Pair is here too. Welcome to the fourth bowl of matcha I will be consuming today. It's a lot of matcha. We got a lot of work to do, so that's okay. <laughs> um, number four will be Poland Spring. So Tyler, thanks for letting us know that this is what uh, Kettle uses. So Kettle, if you guys haven't heard about them, is a matcha purveyor in New York. They focus on Japanese teas, especially matcha. So if they like Poland Spring, I will give a lot of um, credit to that because they go through a lot of matcha. I'm sure they tested things out before too. So far, I like the creaminess of the Evian, but it kills all the flavor. The I like the umami and nutty notes of the Mountain Valley, and I like the fresh floral crispness of the tea curious formula, but none of them are quite right. And what we can do is to kind of slightly adjust our formula to account for all of these things, because while it does well with other teas, matcha we still gotta figure out. Last one we'll do. We will do the Poland Spring that Kettle uses. I'm curious to see how they like their matcha. Different people will prefer different things, of course. I think Ken from um, Tea and Whisk, he also teaches classes there. He actually prefers the teas with water that makes them sharper. 
which to me is insane because I like sweet soft teas, but it's his taste. So yeah, we designed the formula to kind of bring out complexity and just be true to the tea. I find that our formula just, just lets the tea be what it wants to be. And that's what I want it, want for it. I just want you to be what you want to be. <laughs> and then we'll let it rest. So like cool down, I think like two minutes is enough for that. Uh, Clara says if it dissolves in water, it's at least somewhat polar. Yeah, all of these things are polar because they all dissolve in water. So I'm not sure what to say about that. Um, Amy is here. How's it going, Amy? I'm behind on my French. I keep accidentally saying people's names half right in French. <laughs> and who else is here? Dimitri Vilasov. Welcome to our fourth bowl of matcha today. We're testing waters out. We've done Tea Curious Water, we've done Mountain Valley, Evian, and then now Poland Spring with the same matcha from Synensis.mx. Yeah, we, we went straight from the pour challenge into something completely different because while I love the pour challenge and love sharing it with you guys, that was a lot of pour, y'all. It was a lot of pour. <laughs> While we're wrapping this up, let us know what you're drinking today. Also, if you have any suggestions for future topics over the next 10 days, we've been doing this for 30 days straight now. <sighs> what? It's a lot of tea. Actually, today's day 31. This is the 31st consecutive daily tea practice we've done. So thank you for joining us. A lot of you guys have been here since the very beginning. I'm glad that we have something to offer that makes you keep tuning in. <laughs> Which I hope is true all the time, because there's always something to learn together. Um, I've had a lot of fun, for sure. But I think after, if we go any further than 40 days, Steven and I will either kill each other or turn into pumpkins. No, Steven will just collapse. I'll find him in a over-extroverted heap on the floor. <laughs> Steven! <laughs> yeah. Mad Hatter Tea Drunk, how's it going? Uh, you're having 2019 Snooze Fest from YQT. Is that a, is that a message to me? <laughs> so I'm having Snooze Fest while watching the Snooze Fest? Well, <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Although you might have to make matcha. Yeah, you can you can grab a bowl. We've done we've done four. You can handle one. And then Ronan is here too. Late late bonsoir. And in a little bit, I will be joining Sohan's intro to Kung Fu class over in Austin, which is being hosted online. I think there are a couple more slots there in case anyone wants to do a uh, last minute Kung Fu class online today. I'm sure he'll be hosting more, but um, yeah, he is wonderful. I'm going to hop on today both to learn, but also to try to develop a TKR specific class for us. A lot of you guys are incredible brewers already, but every single tea person has a they have their secrets up their sleeves, you know, and Sohan has a lot of them. So I'm really excited to learn from him today and to develop one for us to do later on. So keep tuned for that. And I'm just kidding, Mad Hatter Tea Drunk. We don't joke very much here, so it might not be obvious that we're joking, but we're just joking. I think this is ready. Okay, very last matcha of the day, hopefully. I'm going to be caffeinated up to my gills. I can feel it already. <laughs> I should message Glenn. He says, oh, when I drink, when I, if I drink Altered States, my APM in StarCraft will go really high, basically. How well you do in a computer game. I'm curious to see if Matcha will increase my performance um, while doing computer games as well. I've tested it in terms of how well it keeps me awake on long drives compared to energy drinks before. <laughs> That's another metric. This is foaming really well, by the way. And I can smell it from up here. So maybe kettle is onto something. Wow, okay. I'm pretty excited for this. So Poland Spring is this fourth water. It's actually just as soft as the Tea Curious water. And this is a very good example of why TDS is not the only um, metric you need to use for water because they, they measure at the same amount of minerals, but they have different mineral content. So they will be tasting different, I imagine. Nice, easy, really easy to foam. I dig that. So maybe 
waters that are a little bit softer, easier to foam? I don't know. Interesting. It's got some bounce to it. I'd say the Tikarius one foamed a little bit better, but this is very close. Yeah. Um, Mad Hatter Tea Drunk. We still playing StarCraft 2. <laughs> the StarCraft 2 is out now. Um, and then Ronan's asking what's the test of today. Different water types with matcha. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. That's completely different. So these two, the Tea Curious Water Formula and Pollen Spring, both measure at very similar TDSs. Let's check, because that's what it says on the website, but I want to see what the actual actual is. Pollen Spring, right, Stephen? Just confirming. So our water, the first one measured at 40 to 50. Ooh, this one's even softer. So this is why you don't trust the labels on the, the site. Poland Spring that we're using today is 20 parts per million. So softer than the t Curious formula, actually. Um, sometimes the waters will tell you how hard they are in the label. I like to test them myself because sometimes, depending on the weather or the season, they might only be testing once in a while compared to what they actually bottle. This is softer than the Curious water. That's the only one that I would describe as being grainy. <laughs> Isn't it grainy? No? Yes? On the end. It's not- it's a, at oh, the, the end. Finish. Yeah, the yeah. finish is grainy. I don't know if that's my fault. It could be my fault because all the bowls will be different, but you've seen me, you know, whisk all of these. That's why we do them live. So if there's an issue with what you've seen, you know, I forgot something, you can tell me. Not every experiment will be perfect, but it's good to just do it so that you can help me check. And yeah, I don't like that as much. Interestingly. Hmm. But Kettle in New York uses it. So maybe there's something about the way they prepare matcha or the way they like matcha that they like the Poland spring with. To note, the one thing about this experiment is that I'm using a lower ratio of matcha to water than usual, meaning I usually prepare matcha with more matcha than I'm using today. I'm using less because I don't want to use too much of my really nice matcha. But now I wonder if I should have just went all the way because maybe this water performs a little bit better with that larger ratio of matcha. Um, the, the ratio of your matcha to the water does matter in the taste. It really, really does. The biggest mistake that um, I've seen people do when they're trying to make really good matcha foam is not to use enough matcha. I was aware of it today, I just wanted to use a little bit less so I didn't poison us with caffeine. But I'm curious to see why this is not working as well. I will say though, the aftertaste is very good on the Poland Spring. And this is Kettle's preferred water. I don't think it's mine. It's lacking a little bit of flavor. So both the Evian and the Poland Spring at opposite ends of the hardness of water muted the, wa the tea in different ways. Uh, and that's just why you have to to test. I think that bicarbonate, we need to up the bicarbonate of the Tea Curious formula for this. Matcha is something you want more texture, but also more complexity. So I'm going to figure out if we can increase the bicarbonate content of the Tea Curious water formula from here. Because it's more of a textural thing, that's the issue, I think, for us. And maybe up the hardness just a little bit, like overall minerality, which we will. Anyway, I'm just talking to myself <laughs> because this is just not an experiment for funsies. We are actually going to improve the water formula we have to use for matcha. It's perfectly fine to use for tea of any other kind now. Um, you just have to make small adjustments based on your personal preference. I will post that up on the site over the next couple weeks so you can get an idea of what all the stuff you're, you know we're talking about is, decode a lot of this water talk. I just want to have good water that matches how good my tea is. That's pretty much it. That's the reason why we do these tests. So if you have any questions about that, let me know. And uh, I welcome any questions, suggestions, comments, your own water tests, let me know. It really helps me develop the formula better. And yeah, we'll have a regular tea formula and a matcha formula, just like with coffee. There's a coffee and an espresso. So yeah.
I don't have time to answer all the questions that came in at the end, but just DM me. I will DM you guys back too. And I hope you have a really nice day. Happy Friday. Woohoo. We have to have another 10 days of this. Well, nine days now. We'll see you guys tomorrow for some more daily tea practice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>